Marhaba, Privit, and Anyang Hasayo. Hey, it's time from Green Shorts. And you know that feeling when you're not quite sure how to do something, and so you hesitate. You don't do it. You put it off. <laughs> That's where I am today. Where I was until today, because I'm not going to give myself any more excuses. I built this solar panel roof rack using Ting Tube a couple of months ago now, and I knew I wasn't ready yet to put together the solar system until I did a little bit more research. And I've done that research, but I'm still hesitating in getting started. The funny thing is that I know once I learn how to do this, it's gonna change my life. I'm really excited about being able to do solar on a larger scale, I've done it on a small scale with my phone, using a solar panel to charge a phone or a camera battery. The sun's calling. It's time to charge your phone. This is gonna take it to the next level. I've made it out of TinkTube because TinkTube is the sponsor for the Camper Build series. So TinkTube is a pipe and connector system uh, that lets you build all kinds of projects. You can see TinkTube used all over the Camper Build. It's an amazing DIY system and TinkTube has been a great partner to work with. But today, I have no more excuses. All the parts are here. It's time to get started. In addition to my 50 watt solar panel, I have a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's a deep cycle, 500 watt inverter, and then a charge controller, as well as all the wires to connect them. I made up a few of the wires on my own. The heat shrink tubing was too thick to go over these wires, so I just marked my positive wire with some little red zip ties. The order of operations here is important. You don't want to hook the panel up to the charge controller until it's connected to the battery. And it gets all that voltage coming here would just potentially fry this. And you need to have some place for the energy to go, which is the battery. So first I'm gonna hook up the charge controller to the battery. So these are the connections for the panel. These are connections for the battery. And these are connections for load. And I'm not gonna have a load on this right now. But, so battery connections first. All right, so it's cycling through here. At zero volts coming in from the PV because it's not hooked up yet. Zero amps. My battery's at 13.1 volts and the load is pushing out zero amps. There's nothing connected there. All right, and now to connect the inverter, which will also be connected to the battery. Connect the negative first. A little spark there is to be expected. And now to hook up the solar panel. The positive and negative can be a little confusing on the solar panel because this red gasket does not necessarily mean positive. So I'm going to go into the panel itself and check the wires here for positive and negative and then I'm going to mark them with my zip ties. I do have a positive here, so I'm gonna mark this one with a red zip tie. With the male side of the connector being positive, that means on the other end, the female side is also gonna be positive. Mark this corresponding cable with the zip tie. I'm also gonna mark the other end of this cable as well. Now I'm gonna hook in the solar positive and negative here, but I'm not gonna connect the cables yet. All right, 
now to connect the panel. Start with the negatives first. Of course, it's clouded up right now and the panel is facing away from the sun. All right, it's showing that I'm getting some juice from the panel and into the battery. 13.5 volts and 0.1 amps. So clearly the sun's not out right now, but it's nice to see that we are capturing a little bit of solar energy. Let me try the inverter here. Alright, we got juice. It's the next day and I've got a little bit of a brighter sky. Not quite sunny yet. So this is a 50 watt panel. It's rated for an open circuit voltage of 19.83 volts. It's like 3.15 amps when it's maxed out. So the 13.6 volts of PV is not bad for a cloudy sky. The sun is wanting to peek through and I actually need to move the panel a little bit. I'm actually out of the sun right now. Come on sun, give me some rays. This is the closest I've had to full sun. Let's see what it's given us. 13.7 volts. 1.8 amps. So it's cool to see that the amount of sun that I'm getting is directly correlated to how much power this can generate. It's going to be cloudy for a while, so I'm going to wrap it up. Alright, so I got through it, and I'm still not 100% comfortable with this yet, but I'm confident that I could repeat this. And now that I know the proper order of things and what to expect from voltage and things like that, just need a sunny day to really get this figured out. So, whew. when you encounter something that's a bit of a challenge or something new, you just gotta keep moving forward. It definitely took me longer to make this video than normal, but I wanted to go slow and make sure I was making each step correctly. And I'll need to do some cable management on this, build some kind of an enclosure for it, keeping in mind that heat is gonna be an issue and ventilation is going to be important. So stay tuned for that. Thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I appreciate the support and the vote of confidence. Thanks again to TinkTube for sponsoring this camper build series. And the next video is going to be putting this solar panel on the roof. We'll start on the skin of the camper next. And I'm excited to get that started because it's going to start taking shape. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and see a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Saturday.